Oh, a good program today. Very good program. <laughs> Mr. Dan Betzer is with us. I shouldn't say Mr. He is the overseer of so many churches. And he's going to tell us today why some churches are blessed, why some prosper, and some don't. He's at the First Assembly of God in Fort Myers, Florida. And it's a thrill to have him today. And Jonathan Sawyer is going to be playing for us, singing. And he's going to start the program with Still. I will be 
still Lord I will be still in your presence I will be still and know Oh, wow, beautiful. Beautiful. So I, it just puts you in a beginning of the program in worship. And it really does. Makes me realize that he is everything to us. That's well, our pleasure. present uh, leader is with us. He is the leader of so many people. And Dr. Has Dan Pitzer. You are a doctor, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not even a nurse, Bob. <laughs> but thank you. You're no, not. I've got a good education, but I never got my doctorate. <laughs> but thank you. I always look at you as Dr. Pitzer. I'll just tell people, Dan just said I'm a doctor. <laughs> That's right. So that'll do it. That's right. <laughs> Why some churches are blessed. And that, this book is one for everyone to read. It's for the laity, it's for the pastors, for the music ministers. It really is for everyone. And it'll Great book. tell you what the key ingredient That's right. to having a successful church. You may have a little church somewhere in China because we know this program goes to China. And maybe it's just a little. But if you use these principles, it'll be a mighty church. It will. Right. It's such a privilege to have you. Thank you, Bob. Jane, Bob. good yes, to see you. Is. We enjoyed this book so much, and I told your wife, I laughed all the way through this book. <laughs> Very good book. I mean, there are some things I just think about what you said, and I start laughing. So not only is it um, a funny book in parts, there are so many truths in this book. And I said to Darlene, I don't see how anyone can read this book and not get fired up about the Great Commission. Amen. Well, thank you. I, I wrote the book uh, several years ago out of my great passion for missions. Yes. You know, people, guys will come to the church, pastors from all over. <clears throat> How come the church is this? How come you have so many people? How come you don't have financial problems? And I'll always say, well, it's missions. Missions. And, they, and that goes over their head. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, and they'll, they'll look at me and say, well, you know, we don't want to hear that. I mean, really, what... What is the church growth <laughs> secret here? What's the open sesame? Well, it's, it's missions. And it's kind of like the rich young ruler left Jesus, sadly, you know. And I see these pastors leave, sadly, they drove all the way <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> but it is, it's missions, you know. Yes. That's the business God is in. That's right. And if a church is in the same business God is in. Yes. Amen. Then he'll, why should he bless something he's not in the same business, you know? Oh, that's true. He's not in the church business. No. I was in the church business, my early ministry. <laughs> God, why isn't this going anywhere? Well, you're in the church business, but I'm in the redemption business. Mm -hmm. You get in the redemption business, I'll take care of your church business. And, it, and it's just really that simple. And in a few minutes, not now, but I'm going to quote, it was so funny, <laughs> what God said to you when you wanted to know what was going on, why you couldn't meet the finances, and uh, God spoke to you. I thought it was hilarious in a way. It's the truth, but it was funny. What, it, said, what did God say? Well, I'm going to tell you later. I, oh. I just really wanted to start out saying that, you know, the last time we saw you, we were in your church. Yes, you were. And it was one of the most incredible nights <laughs> I have personally have ever experienced. 
what an exciting night. It, it really was. was. And you all came down to help thing. us and you put it on your whole network live, I think. Yes. And we had uh, John Ashcroft. We had uh, David Hunt. Green from <laughs> Hobby Lobby. We had Bishop uh, uh, Volcom Tolley. I can hardly remember his name <laughs> from Africa. We had uh, Reinhardt. Bonky. Yeah, Reinhard Bonke. Yeah. We had Joe Dr. Wiss? John Patrick. Yeah. We had the full choir and orchestra. And uh, one night, just one night, and you were so good to come down. Thank oh. you. But uh, millions, literally, were raised that night yeah. and enabled us to start and build, build literally build churches uh, all over. How many do you think, how many churches were built out of that one meeting. At least a hundred. At least. Yeah, 100. we worked. We worked with Doris Rosser. That's yes. the other name. <laughs> yes. Dear Doris Rosser, he's ninety-five, Bob. I, that's he's what I was for, telling for you. I know. He's ninety-five, and he's the he's the guy that runs International Cooperating Ministries, and he has built, pushing four thousand four thousand churches. Wow. He's ninety-five, Bob. Hmm. And not only that, but every church they build has to commit to starting three more in a five-year period. So his whole network of Bible preaching churches, not just one denomination, but yeah. Bible preaching churches, it's pretty close now to uh, 30,000 churches. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. 30,000 churches. You know, the theme of that night was all the nations. And I wrote down some of the statistics. You said 62. Well, I wrote 62, but now it's 100, at least 100, you said. 20,000 new believers from that one night. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's People got there to be caught the vision. Triple. That's because they yes. keep building these churches. And they, yeah. he sends a representative down to see me all the time. And they bring pictures of the churches. They know how many are in the church, how many are saved. They know the pastor's name. This guy is 95, Bob. Ah. But he has such a passion for missions. And it's, uh, I flew up to meet him about five, six years ago, I wanted, and I knew then he was about 90. So I thought, well, here's a dear old guy, 90. He'll probably come out to <laughs> save me, you know. So I walk out of the terminal in their town up there, and there's this old car parked in front, and the guy's like, honking, he's honking. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's Doeth Rosser. <laughs> he's 90 years old, man. He's wonderful. Uh, Love him. Wow. And he raises so much money and he just does it for one reason, yeah, yeah. to win souls. That's right. If, That's if right. we could only get that process. It's contagious, Passion. Bob. It's, yeah. it, it is. You know, there's nothing contagious about people just moaning and groaning, and <laughs> it's a terrible world. And it is a terrible oh, world. Oh, my But foot. we have a message that is so life-changing, and uh, it's contagious. It just, it, that's what happens. It rubs off. That's why churches are blessed. And so this program is over with now because you told us the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everybody. Well, there's so much more to it. I would like oh, to yeah. go back to when you started because you felt called to Bible College. And that's where you met your wife, Darlene, who's here. Yeah, Darlene's here. Yes. And I started broadcasting when I was three, Jane. I, wow. I was three years old on WNAX out of Sioux City, Iowa. There was a little polka band there at that time run by a guy who really thought he had a future. His name was uh, Lawrence Welk. Yeah, that was his name. <laughs> really? I don't know whatever happened to him. <laughs> this is the same station where Tom Brokaw got started on NBC right. about 20 years later. But in 1940, 1940, I started broadcasting on weekends. I was three. We did kid shows and wow. so on and so forth. So then by the time I got into high school, I was really into it uh, with radio and television, newscasting and so forth, a business that I loved. Wow. But I've always had a burden to be in the ministry. God called me to, to be yeah. in the ministry. And uh, I stipulated, and this is in the book, I st you never stipulate to God. No. No. <laughs> Those two things. Because he'll do gonna... the opposite. Yeah, it's like drawing on the Lone Ranger, you know. It's not going to work out well for you. But I remember saying, God, I'll just, I'll go anywhere you want me to go except the north. Didn't like the north. I was raised in the north. Snow and ice. 
and I'll do anything but plant air churches. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have said that to God. <laughs> so for the next almost 20 years, Darlene and I lived, I wanted a beach ministry. Oh. And God gave me a beach ministry, but it was Lake Erie. <laughs> Lake Erie. <laughs> wrong, you know that's the wrong beach. They don't have too many beaches there. And we were there for about 20 years, starting churches up there, all starting churches, which is where this whole thing originated because I couldn't figure out why the churches weren't exploding. In, in both the Old and New Testament, we read that God is not willing that anybody perish. Well, then there has to be a way to reach them. Otherwise, God's cruel and arbitrary. And he's not cruel. He's not arbitrary. He's loving. So there has to be a way, a way to reach them. And we had a handful of people, 90 people, 90 people maybe after a year, but no money. The finances were just terrible. Mm. And I'd preach on tithing, you know, and I'd hear people say, amen, God bless you, preach about tithing, and pass the offering plate, Shh, nothing, you know, <laughs> nothing. And after about a year starting this little church, we were about five, $6,000. Our whole budget for this church, our whole budget for the year was $15,000, one five zero zero. That's about 300 bucks a week. Now remember, this is 50, 60 years ago. I'm getting up there. I can imagine what your salary was. <laughs> salary? <laughs> you say salary or salary? <laughs> it was terrible. So, and we weren't doing that. And, and after about a year, we were thousands of dollars in the red in general fund. We can't operate like that. And I got pretty sick, you know. And I, and I remember praying, God, why, why aren't we making it? And God said, I'm not blessing you because you're not in the same business I'm in. Well, what do you mean I'm not in the same business? I got a church, I got a pulpit, got a Bible, have Sunday school. Yeah, he's, God says to me, but you're in the church business. I'm not in the church business. I'm in the redemption business. You get in that business, I'll take care of your church business. So I asked the Lord what to do, and this is what the book is about. God said three things. Yeah. I want you to have a missionary convention. I said, oh God, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been to a missionary convention? <laughs> That's sleepy Slide. time, you know. Slides. <laughs> oh, slides, yeah. <laughs> Tell you a true story. I think I put this in the book, but this, the God hears me, this is true. We had a missionary come through, got the projector and his little clicker, you know. And he goes, uh, it's a picture of a tree, <laughs> other tree, a whole lot of trees. And, and God hears me. This is a picture of my wife and our pet chimpanzee. <laughs> my wife is the one on the right. That's a true. I mean, that service was over. And then there was always the final slide, you know, the sun sinking into the sea. It's boring. Yeah. I said, Lord, it, uh, God said to me, you, you do the missions convention, and ours usually last about 10 days, and you do what I tell you to, and I'll bless you. So that was number one. Then God says, I want you to bring in for your first missions convention, Dr. Oswald J. Smith of the People's Church in Toronto. I thought, are you kidding me? Dr. Smith, the great Dr. Smith, the, the master of missions, Billy Graham said that Oswald Smith was the most influential man in his life. Wow. I'm supposed to get this man to come to our little church of 90 people? God said, ask him. And I've still got his letter. He said, I just feel God led me to invest a week of my life in you. Wow. And he changed my life. He was a cantankerous old boy, you know. <laughs> he was about 80 at the time. He died when he was 90 something. Very cantankerous. That's what you needed. Well, that's right. <laughs> You don't always need somebody to pat you on the back. That's right. Sometimes it needs to be a little lower. <laughs> well, and he was kind of tough on the congregation. Oh, he's very tough. He said, <laughs> who, do you think you are? Yeah, who do you think you are? He said, you come to this little cute little church, you sit in cushion pews there, you heard the gospel. Well, how many times you heard the gospel? When half the people in the world have never heard it one time, who do you think you are? What makes you special? He said, you're supposed to reach these people. And he really made us angry that's the open opening night <laughs> i thought my word i got monday night with this guy it's going to be there's nobody going to be here but darlene and me and smith and i wasn't sure darlene was coming 
And you looked at Darlene and kind of pantomimed. Oh, you yeah, I leaned and she was over at the piano. Packing. And I said to her one word, pack. Because oh. <laughs> we're going to be leaving here, you know, real quick. But Monday night, there were more people. Tuesday night, the place was jammed. We had chairs in the aisle. It's a little, not a little church. Seat maybe 130, 40 people. People out in the lobby. And it was that Tuesday night that God revolutionized my life. I felt the Holy Spirit, and I'm not spooky. You know me, Bob. I'm an old German. <laughs> but I felt God speak to me and say, you believe what that old man is saying? And I was crying. I said, yes. God said, good, sell your car and give it to missions. I want to hear that. I want to hear that. And I know that I, you're supposed to hear, I sold a car, gave it to missions, and God gave me a Benz by Friday, you know. Yeah. No, it's not true. And we had a beat up old car that we drove. I hated it. And I know the Bible said God loves a cheerful giver, but he'll also take it from a grouch. Yeah. And I was grouchy about it. And uh, a few weeks later, a few months later, I got a packet of pictures from the missionary that got that money of the little church they built in Africa. Now, you, did, you didn't church. give up that old car. Yeah. Well, it wasn't old. It was just a year old. Oh, yeah. The it was Bonneville. Just, just a yeah. year, and it was beautiful. Big Bonneville. Part. One with the bumper, the fenders that went into the next county, you know. <laughs> it was a gorgeous car. Because you didn't think you heard from God. You went home and your wife, Darlene, said, did God tell you to sell our car? Yeah. And before that, just clenched it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, why would God tell me this? I love cars. God said, sell your car. So I got home and Darlene, my precious wife, we just had our 61st anniversary. Wow. My wow. precious wife said, God tell you to sell our car tonight? Give the money to the missions? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of how it all got started. And that little church with a, with a budget of $15,000, that Sunday gave $32,000 to missions. And the place exploded, not only financially, and, uh, uh, but it exploded numerically. We went from 90 to 300 in a year. That little church on the corner. And money never again was a, was a problem. And I'm not suggesting we're giving here to get. We're giving here to fulfill the Great Commission. And Jesus said, go into all the world. It's not just, I'm from Fort Myers, but that's not my only mission. Fort Myers is part of my mission. Because I hear pastors telling me this all the time. Well, my mission here is Tampa or Clearwater or Dubuque or wherever. No, it's only part of it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every Amen. creature. So that's kind of how this got started. And then a few years well, ago. Well, let's uh, take a break. Yeah. I'm and wound when up we come now, back, Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when we come back, after Jonathan sings and plays for us, um, I don't know what he's singing and playing. But it'll be good. It'll, it'll be, be good. great. <laughs> Jonathan. Terry Tripp's Empower Minute. The defining difference in Jesus and religion is this. Religion says work to be accepted by God. Jesus says, I worked, you rest in me. The only work we do is rest. And believe me, ceasing from our works to rest can be um, hard work sometimes. <laughs> When there is so much pulling for our attention, it's easy to start looking at our performance. Whenever we do, it opens the door to condemnation. We can never do enough to earn what God has freely given. We simply receive. That's why I support this station. They give the good news of the gospel. Take a moment, financially support this station and help people realize they can rest, not in religion, but in Christ.
did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby has walked where angels try, and when you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? This child that you're holding is the great I am. The great I get to hear that every weekend. Oh my God! Boy, are you blessed? Oh, we're blessed. Now we're that blessed. you think that's a Christmas song, but it's not. No, it's <laughs> that's a twelve song. months out of the year. Yeah, every every week. <laughs> Boy, he is something else. Well, I want to find out what a faith promise is, because that's what people do in a missions convention. A faith promise is not a pledge. 
and somebody's going to say, well, that's semantics. No, it isn't semantics, because a pledge is what you can do out of your income. And most of us work on a budget. We have children, grandchildren. We have great-grandchildren, <laughs> and they never leave. <laughs> They're with you always, just like Jesus. And there's always, some, you know, your budget is shocked. That's why people get uptight when they talk about money. They work on budgets. Well, I can't do that. Of course not. It demands the supernatural. The gospel can only be explained by the supernatural. That's really. the truth. And you take this giant step and you make faith promises. And a faith promise makes God the source. It's what God will do through you, not for your own benefit. Not so you can get a bigger car or another house. I mean, not, I'm not into that. And it's not for his benefit. It's for the benefit of the lost of the world. That's right. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and signs and wonders will, what's the verb? Follow. They know never come first. And preachers will say, well, as soon as we get this paid and the church is out of debt, then it doesn't work that way. The signs and wonders follow obedience. You do that first and then God says, I'm going to bless that. Obedience, obedience to the Lord. Amen. So I got that from Oswald Smith. He was kind of the founder of that, you know? Really? And he started talking about faith promises. And uh, I've seen God do things that really are, are just, just incredible. You got time for a story? Yes. yes. We built a, a children's center about 12 years ago. Uh, it cost five and a half million dollars. I didn't want to borrow money. I just didn't want to borrow money. God help us. So the Lord put on my mind the names of some people. One of them never even came to our church. I don't know that he's ever darkened the door. He was an older fellow. He was a businessman in town. And a different denomination. You know, denominations are, the name over the door doesn't mean a whole lot. <laughs> so I, I went to see him. He lived in a high rise in our town. I had the blueprints with me and I'd ask the Lord, if you'd give $50,000, wouldn't that be terrific? So I ring the doorbell and the butler answers, yes, ma'am, I have an appointment. Oh, yes, come in, please. <clears throat> the old guy saw me coming in and just blew his stack. Oh, another preacher with a set of blueprints. Oh, he wants my money. Just put him down and leave me alone. If I want to do this, I'll call you. I'm like, man, that's, Lord, I thought you called me here. So the next day he calls me. This old guy calls me. He says, could you come and have lunch at my place? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking $50,000, hallelujah. Go up to his penthouse up there. All the food's laid out, and so are the blueprints. He said, Pastor Betzer, I've never seen anything like this. This is just incredible. He said, I don't go to your church, probably never will, but I'd like to be a part of this. I thought, $50,000. He said, I'm just going to give you a million dollars. Wow. And he did. He did. And yet pastors will look me right in the eye and say, we can't afford to support missions. No, you can't afford not to. Mm -hmm. God blesses mm -hmm. obedience. Not for your own, so we don't have a, you know, you've been in our building, it's old. Our building's 40, 50 years old. Yeah. Shoot, I'm old, <laughs> I'm 80. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with supply to reach people for Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, I am so grateful to you guys and your great network of stations. We're on, we're on every day down in Fort Myers, and we're on, on the whole network once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. And you have been such an incredible blessing uh -huh. to Fort Myers, to First Assembly. Can't, can't even begin to thank you enough. Before you set up th down there, which is about how long ago, 25 years, 20 years ago? 20 years, yeah. We were on a little station that you could only find if you had piano wires hanging down, <laughs> you know, as antennas, and you came along and you built that great station down there, CTN 10. Thank you, thank you. Oh, wow. So grateful, and we support you with everything that we I can. I know you do. We even pay our bills. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all work together. Well, that's One true. We're working together. Advanced. Now, that million dollars, what did that do for you? <laughs> made me want to listen to God more. 
Well, it was terrific, and we built that building debt-free. Wow. And over and over, I have seen God provide. Uh, I, I've seen huge checks for the work of God, not for me, you know. And even on this book, I take no money for that book. I would be touched. How do by people it. get it, by the way? You can go online to First Assembly. It's a, uh, it's uh, let me see, www.famfm.com, and all of our stuff is there. But I take no money for these books. I'm, I'm not a book hustler. Every book that comes in, we take the money and buy more books. I've given 5,000 of those to pastors. Wow. And I have to pay for them, too, by the way. <laughs> They're not given to me by the publisher. But I feel so passionately about this. I'm not in this for money, mm. but I am in it to reach people for Christ. You know, I really do believe in anointing that's on this book because I know how I felt when I read it. But, you know, this morning, God, uh, Bob and I were talking about uh, the book and yourself and your wife, and we realized that all these blessings also came, just like you said, from obeying God. Because the Lord called you to Fort Myers, and you didn't think it was God in 1986. No. And this guy, you turned him down, the guy called and said, we prayed about this, yeah. <laughs> and you're supposed to come. <laughs> and when you get there, I mean, oh, my goodness. You were persecuted. I mean, I turned the page in the book, and it's bullets, witches, and explosions. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, it was really, really tough. Well, it's a terrific point, Jane, because the fact that you're in the smack center of God's will does not mean it's easy. No. Sometimes it's yeah. really rough. And I didn't think we'd last the first six months down there. One of my heroes was the great Leonard Ravenhill. We yeah. used to go to his home and spend days there. <laughs> and uh, he's kind of like Smith, you know, pretty cantankerous with the Lord now. <laughs> we had had our car blown up in the driveway, attempted murder, church member, had the windows of the church shot out repeatedly, all kinds of things. Used to get death threats. And one day I just couldn't take it anymore. So I wrote to Brother Ravenhill, I said, just can't take this anymore. You know, our car's been blown up, et cetera, et cetera. And the finances were bad too. Oh, terrible. <laughs> so he wrote me a letter longhand. He says, dear Dan, <laughs> poor Dan, quite possibly nobody in the history of Christianity has ever suffered as much as you have. <laughs> he wrote, Martha and I were just talking about you at breakfast this morning. What an honor it is for us. <laughs> to know a martyr of your stature. <laughs> and the last line was, don't ever write a letter like that to me again. Wow. <laughs> wow, that'll wake you up. And the thing turned, I wanted to leave. Every morning I prayed, oh God, get me out of here. God said, I called you there. I called you there. And if you leave, you leave by yourself. I called you there. But he did say, do the what I told you in the first place. Yeah, you know, God said, what, what are you gonna do, God? He said, we'll go back to the first fruit. Go back to the way it was all those years ago. And missions turned that church around. Mm. And we had just a few people then uh, for our 4th of July weekend a couple of weeks ago, we had just under 11,000 people there for the weekend. Wow. So God's really turned that thing around. And it's the only way you can explain it, boy, it's not, it's not I. That's, it's not I. I'm just an old man who can't remember anything. <laughs> but it's God. God did it, and God gets all the glory Amen. and all the honor. And he gives us people like Jonathan, you know, what a blessing that is. Yeah. Yeah. And a wonder, wow. I've got a wonderful staff, Bob. I, I lean on the, I'm like Moses, I lean on my staff, you know. <laughs> I love my staff, they're, they're terrific. Some have been with me 30 years, old Dave Thomas, whom you know, yeah. old Dave Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm older than he is, but he's been with me now almost 30 years down there. Well, you know what? I wanted you to bring before this program's over. When you obeyed and did missions again and God started blessing, you still had that terrible financial situation where I don't know if the bank was going to call yeah, a loan. Yeah, we were or, just very close to receivership, Yeah, losing it. And the Lord sent a man to After you. After the first missions convention, Jane, God wow. sent a man, called me. I didn't know See? this guy. <laughs> and he Mission. said, can I take you out to eat? Well, absolutely. Leviticus 3.16 is the best verse in the Bible. The fat belongs to the <laughs> Lord. So I said, absolutely. So he took me to an old restaurant. He said, 
and I don't know this guy. He said, my wife and I are going to start coming to First Assembly. I said, why? He said, because of missions. He said, we've been looking for some place that really believes in global evangelization. We're going to start coming. But he said, uh, I don't want to belong to a church that owes $100,000 on a gym. Well, we did. I just got there, Bob. I've only been there six <laughs> months. I didn't build a gym. I didn't borrow the money. He said, I'm not going to come to your church if you owe $100,000 on a gym. I said, well, that's just part of what we owe. He said, I'm not interested in the rest of it. He sat down and wrote me a check for $100,000. I've never seen that wow. up to that time. First he sent to God. He said, now, do you think you'd go pay off the gym? I said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then he said, now, you owe millions of dollars on the rest of the place. He said, at that time, it was 22% interest, that big a loan. That's Remember? right. 22%. Well, that bankrupts you. He said, I'm going to loan you the money you need at 8%. And for the first couple of years, don't think about paying me back. Let's get this church on its feet. Wow. And he, why, why did he come to our church? Missions. Mission. We can't afford missions in our church, Brother Dan. We can't afford not to. That's God right. blesses it. And we're not in this just to be blessed and get new suit and all. I'm not interested in that. But God takes care of you. God takes care of our yeah. church. Amen. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, wow. What Glad a blessing. Glad what a blessing. <laughs> this book yeah. has been <laughs> has been to me and I just uh, am thrilled and I can't tell you enough. If this hasn't whetted your appetite, <laughs> the whole book will. Oh, it will. <laughs> because it is just about missions and what it'll do for your church. And some of you are saying, my pastor needs that. <laughs> Get the book and give it to him. And I will give him the book. I, I don't want your money. <laughs> I, I don't want any money. You contact us, I'll send you the books. However many you need. Wow. I've sent them out three, 400 at a time, Bob. That's how much I believe in this book, this wow. message. Yeah. Mm. Can't ask for anything more than that. <laughs> so don't continually pl uh, pray for your church. And the thing is, the key is missions. Hey, amen. So you can give to missions, and God just <laughs> he just said amen. Said that's, amen that's to thunder. that. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> that's power, brother. <laughs> that's power. Honey, what have you got right here? I have uh, Jonathan's new CD, My Song Shall Rise to Thee. This is the music you have been listening to, and this is his new worship CD. Amen. Jonathan. Hi, I'm Brooke Larson, one of the many people that work here at CTN behind the scenes. Each day we come together to bring you Christian programming and testimonies that help you on your Christian walk. Programs that speak life, truth, healing, and change. We believe that God so loved this world that he gave his only son and that anyone that believes in his son, Jesus Christ, would not perish but have eternal life. That's why we're here today to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ across the airwaves and into your homes so that you and your family can find that same love that will set you free. Please consider partnering with us today and help us spread the gospel to every home. If each of us takes part and unites together in prayer and support, we can help change lives, communities, and nations.
across the struggle. Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past. Bound up in shackles of all my failures. Wondering how long is this going to last? Then you look at this prisoner and say to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain. Now I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. All my life I've been called unworthy. Named by of my shame and regret but when I hear you whisper child lift up your head I remember oh God you're not done with me yet I am redeemed you set me free thank you Jesus so I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain. Now I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed because I don't have to be the old man inside of me because his day is long dead and gone because I've got a new name a new life I'm not the same a hope that will carry me on I am redeemed you set me free yes you did so I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain, cause I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. You set me free. Yes, you did. So I'll shake off these heavy chains. Wipe away every stain. Now I'm not who I used to be. No, oh Lord, I'm not who I used to be. Thank you, I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. I Thank you, Jonathan. Wow. I am redeemed. What a story that is. Yeah. And it can be your story, too. That's right. And you can sing that song. And you say, well, you don't know what I'm going through and what I'm about to do. or and None of that makes a difference. But you can be redeemed. And, Dan, I'm going to ask you to pray with people and tell them how they can be redeemed. Oh, that would be my great joy. I had a wonderful father. He's been with the Lord now for a long, long time. My dad never hit me. He never spanked me. He had discipline, but he never hit me. He didn't have to. 
The reason why is because I loved my dad so much that I would do anything not to grieve him, to hurt him. I wanted my dad to be proud of me. That's the way I feel about God. I don't want to make God sorrowful for me. He created me. He designed me. He loves me. You cannot imagine how much God loves you. I mean, you really can't. God so loved the world. What do you think that means? I believe it means God so loved the world. Amen. You don't want to grieve him with your life. Don't hurt him. We, we talk about knowing Christ as our personal Savior. It starts with repentance. Oh, God, if I've done anything to offend you or to hurt you, please forgive me. I, I really don't want to grieve you. I want to, I want to fulfill the purpose for which you made me. I want to make you happy. I want to be what you created me to be. So, God, anything in my life that I've done, whether intentionally or just even unintentionally. Please forgive me. It all starts with repentance. Isn't that what Jesus said? It's what John the Baptist yes. taught. Starts with repentance. Oh God, forgive me. Take away my sin, wash away my sin, please. And then fill me with your spirit, Lord, so that I have the strength and the courage and the grace to be what you've called me to be. I'm a Christian for one primary reason. Can I tell you what it is? It's a terrific way to live. I believe in heaven, absolutely. I believe there's a place called hell, absolutely. But that's not why I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus because it's a good life. Amen. That'd make a great name for a television yes, program. Yes, it would. It's a good life. It's a wonderful way to live. You know Jesus Christ, you can put your head on the pillow at night, Lord. Oh, the old child prayer, Lord, I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Absolutely. I've, had, I've been married now for 61 years. Can you believe that? 61 years. Mm. God gave us terrific marriage. It's still going on. Four children who love God. Wasn't always easy. Bunches of grandchildren, four great grandchildren. I love a church that I love with a passion. But Jesus loves it even more. Yes. And he loves you. It is a good life. Lord Jesus, a lot of folks watching this, mm. but on the other side of that camera, there's just one guy, one gal, somebody who needs you desperately. I pray, dear Lord, that the words we have said today bring you glory and honor. That's what they were what you wanted us to say and that you'll touch the life of this person who says, I'm sorry, Lord, for my sin. Come into my life. I thank you for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we all said amen. 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 Oh, I'm thrilled that many of you have accepted the Lord today. Yes. I can just, I don't know Side if God did this for me, but when yes. I look at that, camera yeah. I see people That's right. God bless you Jonathan's going to close the program good good father turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face And the things of this earth Will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory Tender whispers 
waves of loving the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am Call me deeper still, oh, you call 